We're gonna go pay Vince the Barber a visit real quick um, over at his shop, Gray Matter. They're in the new location on La Brea, so we're gonna head there now. to stop by Grey Matter real quick to talk to Vince the Barber. We're actually doing a really fun giveaway and I'm excited to share that with you guys. In my Gold Zone class, this was the first time ever I'm sh I've ever heard of it, but we were able to put together this like super barber kit to give to each of the attendees, which was really awesome because one thing that I remember doing is whenever I would do classes, sometimes it wasn't always the easiest because everyone had different tools. So in the Gold Zone course, we were able to make sure that everyone was using the same tools and all of them were the highest professional grade possible, which I truly love because with technology, I'm always trying to look for the next best thing, something that's gonna last me a really long time, only professional grade. And so we were able to put this really insane, dope kit together um, with my favorite clipper company, Babyless Pro. And in this episode, we're gonna go talk to Vince and talk about his latest product. So right now I'm making my way through, uh, grabbing lunch real quick, and then we're gonna head to Vince's shop. Okay, guys, so we just made it out here to Gray Matter. What's up, Vince? What's good? All right, so I want to go right into the general light. If you could take me through why you wanted to create this, like what was the start of like creating these products? First things first, you know, I, I, I was a mobile barber. Um, I did a lot of house calls, hotel calls. I went through maybe eight to 10 of those cases that everyone had. Um, but at the same time, I had the case, had all my tools and still carried a backpack. It just got to the point where like my tools got got all uh, got all ruined in the case and you know I had to buy new clippers and you know us barbers we spend a lot of money on clippers and then we buy like a hundred dollar box that doesn't really protect our stuff so I'm you know looking into our industry I'm like damn there's no like barber backpacks or there's nothing that's made for us to be able to carry everything and not have to carry more than one thing to carry our stuff so it took me maybe three years to design um, the barber backpack the, the bipartment only general and I took uh, opinions from a lot of barbers and asked what you know they they wish they had out there in the market that would help them and you know I put all, all those options together and um, yeah, I literally, I went through maybe five or six samples um, and finally found the best one. And I really wanted to create a backpack where you could carry all your tools, um, all your spray bottles, uh, your product, the mirror, um, even a blow dryer, because that's, you know, that's important nowadays. So, um, yeah, so I came out with the, well, this one's a smaller one. This is the General Light. Uh, we had the General V2, which is essentially the same thing, just 25% bigger. Um, the V2 holds four clippers. The General Light holds three. Um, and then I created the Sidekick, which is essentially the Sidekick to the General Light. Um, it holds the same amount of clippers as a light, but it's typically used for those that don't need that much, um, that much tools to do their job. Uh, I think it's best for Again, those that have your regular weekly house call clients where you really only need one or two clippers, just the essentials to get the job done. I think it's great for those that are platform artists because again, you don't have to carry a, a whole big bag or a big case um, to do to demonstrate a haircut. Um, so I think it's definitely something perfect for, for someone that doesn't need too much to do their job. Um, and one of the things that I think a lot of people watching this would want to see is how it looks. So. Can you demonstrate by putting that one on just so I can yeah. see it on you? For sure. All right, so this is the general light, right? Yeah. So this isn't too bad. Again, all our products are TSA approved. So uh, you could bring it on the plane as a carry-on. Uh, that's one issue too I had with the case is that I would have to check that in. And you know, by the time I land and I go to uh, baggage claim and I grab my case, everything's all broken. So again, this, this is really helpful. It's really small, compact, stylish. Um, you know, I get it a lot where people ask me like, yo, what kind of backpack is that or what is that? I'm like, oh, it's a barber backpack. 
like a barber backpack like yeah man it's clean uh, I, I even use it to travel without my clippers uh, this bottom pocket here it's got velcros inside so you can remove it and put a pair of shoes so it also acts as like a little weekender backpack too so that's good wait well. you can take the panels out yeah man oh shit I never knew that actually mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah, so okay. it's compact, it's not too big, not too bulky. Mm -hmm. Now the new product, guys, the new product. Yeah, the sidekick right here. Again, like I mentioned, it's pretty much a sidekick to the General Light and the V2. Um, let's open it up. Now this also holds the same amount of clippers that this backpack would. Again, exactly. it's just in a smaller, so here's a quick little close up. One, two, and three, and then you got your comb slots here where the scissors are at. And you can fit a bottle of disinfectant spray right along the middle, and probably a water bottle if you'd like as well that would fit comfortably yeah. in so there. So it's pretty roomy. I made sure to still have room for products. And some people, again, that carry more clippers than three could even fit clippers in between. You could put... This you is got, where all the guards would yep, go. Guards, and then you got room for your neck strips. That's yeah, important. That's, so that way you're not carrying. This is, a, yeah, I really love that pocket because yeah. usually my neck strips are just everywhere. Exactly. So I wanted to make it, you know, more secure, okay, or more put organized. That one on. Yeah. So this you could even wear it different ways. Um, for me, I like carrying it like this. Simple. Okay, like kind of like a half so backpack. Shoulder, yeah. People like wearing it in the front. You can wear it in the back like this. Yeah. And then some people wear it in the front like this as well. Or you could be <laughs> you could be one of those guys that wear it right in the front here. And you could tighten. Just tighten the straps. You could wear it. <laughs> and where you could actually work out of it if you want to. It all depends. It's up to you. And I wanted to kind of just talk a little bit about just like how we met and, and the importance of like networking and Somehow, some way, like I remember I followed you on Instagram for a while and when I met you it was just like holy shit that's Vincent Barber like you were doing all the new stuff and you had just came here from uh, Canada mm -hmm. and that's when I found out about you, I found out about Jules because you guys were at Capsule at the time I discovered them and I was still in the first shop that I started at which was in Orange County so it was just crazy because that was the start of Instagram yeah, but we exactly. first got on there Instagram started becoming this like modern portfolio that we're all trying to like cross promote to like get uh, exposure online and it was just crazy because I met them at an event it was at a local event I came through I don't know if I came with people from the barbershop I think you did yeah we came we came all the way out here to LA to this event at Capsule at the time and that was that was definitely the first time I think I actually met all of you. Yeah. And what's crazy is, you know, we just kind of kept a really organic relationship throughout the years. And so when I had the opportunity to finally leave Orange County, I actually came to LA and worked with Vince. And he uh, told me, he's like, yo, I just, if I'm not mistaken, you said you're the first person outside of the capsule group that we, we yeah. have a spot for. So, I mean, I was super honored to be able to have that opportunity to work out in LA with these guys who were already making so much noise in the industry. So, like, I mean... I, I feel old. <laughs> I know, because now you're, you're the OG, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, it's crazy. You've been out here in LA now for 10, ten years. years. Yeah, ten so, years. 10 years, and if you've seen any of his stuff, he cuts a lot of celebrities, uh, a lot of athletes, and actually my first experience Doing a celebrity, I think, was through you. It was Tyrese. It was Tyrese. <laughs> it was Tyrese. <laughs> That's right. That was that. It was so funny because you know people are always like, "What are you even cutting?" He's bald, no. right? It doesn't matter. Honestly, this is the thing. This is the same thing with like Mayweather's barber. Is like the service is not necessarily how much hair you're cutting off. Like you're still going to there to provide them um, some sort of grooming thing, service to still like give them a cleanup, even if it is a buzzed head is that you are still going over there to do something for them. I mean, they called you for a reason. So. Exactly. Um, can you tell me a little bit about like your first experience like cutting celebrities? Like how did you like land that first opportunity when you moved out here? Because you, first of all, you were new out here. Yeah, you no built one, everything from scratch. Yeah. Um, no, no one knew who I was. I, I pretty much took it as an opportunity to become um, I mean, there's a lot of things that I needed to work on at the time. Like, I was super, I was a shy person. 
I didn't like coming up to people and talking. I didn't like talking in front of people. Uh, but it was something where like, okay, I could start coming out of my bubble and no one knows me out here. Um, so, you know, I could be whoever I wanted to be, who I, who I wanted to become. And so I started going out and just like networking and networking is huge in LA. Like, you know that firsthand, yeah. like, um, and just really talking about yourself and like being confident in what you do. And like I tell a lot of my barbers and a lot of barbers period is that you just never know who's going to be in your chair. You never know who you're going to meet. Um, you never know who they know, who they're connected to. And literally I landed some of my first celebrity clients just off of clients that I've cut, people I've met. Um, that you went out to network for or they came uh, to the shop? No, well, I, I, I met people. It pretty much started off in like the clothing industry. I met a lot of people from like Crooks and Castles at the time and you know they're a huge company back then and uh, they know a lot of people and it was it was pretty much um, you know again just networking and them putting you on to people and uh, what I first learned cutting my first my first big big celebrity when I first moved out here uh, well it was a dance community the Jabberwockies was literally right. remember we went to World yep. Dance Exactly. Okay, so the first dance event I've been to was with the Grey Matter Barbershop and we went to, it was a world of dance in LA. LA yeah. yeah, Yeah. but like my first, uh, my first, yeah, celebrity, I mean, you know, I, I, I look at them as a celebrity, you know, as celebrities. Oh yeah, they were TV, they were on yeah. TV. So like, they, it was MTV Cribs and um, I got the phone call like, yeah, you know, we, we need a barber on set, uh, do you mind cutting up the Jabberwock? It was like, oh shit, like I'm a huge fan. I'm down, so I went there, cut them all up, and then, you know, I figured that's just a one-time thing. And next thing you know, like a week later, they called me again. They got another ABDC um, shoot, so can you come on set and cut them again? And that just, that got me into the dance community where I cut. All I was cutting were just all dancers. So Jabberwocky, Super Crew, like all those guys. So dance community is huge in, in, in my life because that's that's what kind of got me started. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, I met people that were linked to like music artists and, and like basketball players and all that. And along the way, as you're cutting these celebrities, you're learning like how to be professional in that environment because you don't want to be that type of person who's all up in their face, like, oh my God, I'm a big fan, da da da, because they have enough of that. Yeah. You know, like you going there to provide a service, they just want to be, be at peace and, you know, just pretty much just be calm and, and you know, they're they're trusted in your hands. You know? I learned a lot. So sure. you feel like you had to learn how to be professional in those situations by going through it. Exactly. Like you were just kind no of like one, observing. No one teaches you that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm blessed to be able to, you know, be where I am now and be able to teach this to, to those the younger generation because, you know, it's going to help you guys out because if you guys hop up in that situation and, again, you be, you're a fan before you're a professional barber or groomer, then you could lose that client just like that. You know, it's all about professionalism and and just being confident in what you do and not have to become a fan you know what i mean like you want that client to be to eventually become you know more than a more than a client well they'll become family you know? and i'm blessed to say that a lot of my celebrity clientele is you know i don't look at them as celebrities are more like family now so it's cool it's like a new avenue it's a new professionalism that you have to learn kind of like what you're saying too it's like you can't just go in there and fan fangirl or fanboy over these people and in those situations I have heard stories through, through different managers that have lost the opportunity to continue working because yeah. they were so overly excited about who they met so I do definitely think that is something you guys should all should be aware of if you guys do tap into that world and just to feel it out you know like really kind of read people's energies what would your one advice be to any like barbers young and old if they want to tap into this type of clientele um, one I, f I feel like now it's more like obviously networking it all goes back to networking um, and then as a barber it's good to network with other barbers that are cutting these clients because that's what happens it's like if I'm not available I have a good handful of guys that I trust that understand you know what uh, what it takes to actually cut you know these A-list clients um, and and that's all it's been it's really like I'll get clients that hit me up like yo I'm in this city or this town and I need a barber like who can who could you put me on with and now I have that relationship with these guys where they trust in me to trust in my barbers that I could send to them um, but at the same time it's trying to get in with those that work with these clients as well um, you know like managers and like 
for music artists like a rs or producers like these are guys that you could easily have access to which then have access to the people that you really want to cut mm -hmm. so it's just going down the line of of who you know you know fuck with these people and work with these people mm -hmm. on other cases and uh again just networking with them it's not so much dming the actual person you want to yeah. that's get filtered out quick yeah um what's three networking tips you have for people because i think sometimes people don't know like do i just it's uncomfortable like do i just barge in and say hello like what what is like three things that you think about yourself when you're about to go network with people to try to like you know make connects like what do you think about trying to achieve um, in those moments i mean you definitely want to go to these people and like Again, you want to approach them in a professional manner. You don't want to just come up right up to them and like sell yourself, and because then you look too desperate. You got to make everything organic nowadays. It's so easy to catch people and read people that, like you were saying, like read people's energy. Um, again, you got to be genuine because it's so easy to, to to catch people that are in it. And that's the thing. Like, are you in it because you're actually passionate about what you do, or are you in it for the inst for the gram? Mm -hmm. I mean, for the photo, the post to say that I did this or cut this person, like, there's so many different ways. But as far as networking, I think it just boils down to, like, again, being organic. And if it's, you know, again, like, going to industry parties, going to, like, uh, you know, there's, like, an art gallery. And, like, nowadays, everyone's into art. Um, if you go to, like, a pop-up where so-and-so's popping up to do a signing or something, like, Go to those go to those parties and actually that's your place to network because everyone that you know in that place is going to be linked to the people that you want to cut and are you giving business cards or like how you uh so how you leave them? it's it's uh i feel like business cards work but it depends on how your business card looks so that's important that's important because you don't want it too tacky where it's like so big and like you just have like pictures of your haircuts no nah, you don't want none of that you want again to be professional about it you could easily you know just top it up with them organically and be like yeah like are you on the gram or here's my email or you could slip to the business card like you want to keep it really again genuine and not forceful um but nowadays everyone uses instagram as like your resume mm -hmm. so again like when it comes to networking make sure your instagram is on point uh you're not posting you smoking weed drinking doing all that crazy stuff like it's got to be professional show your work because a lot of a lot of times now it's like when so my celebrity clients hit me up like yo i'm in miami i need a barber oh what's what's your instagram that's the first thing they ask me true so so even if they're not looking at you you could get recommended in exactly. and if you don't have anything to show for it it kind of kills that yeah and that's happened that to me mess. before because i know people i don't necessarily i'm not necessarily on the instagram all the time to see their work but i just know that they're good for it so sometimes they'll hit me like yo there's not too many things on their instagram but i'm like no trust me he's good i'll take care of you so again like the relationship with your clients is it means a lot you know what I mean? because again you could be cutting one person that you know doesn't know you may think he doesn't know people but he's related to a celebrity or someone that you've been wanting to cut or work with so that even too like i've had opportunities to work with several different brands through clients that are related to these owner brand owners you know so you just never know again it, it all comes it all starts in the chair as an owner that's looking to hire people what are things that you look for when you're scanning like do you go through like a resume like do you have people turn in resumes or is it simply just what does your social media presence look like uh, um, i mean it's a bit of everything it's like lately it's been more um like referrals you know because so you'll talk to other owners i'll talk to other or where they came owners from? or even barbers like yo do you know any barbers oh, okay. out there because it's i've been to a situation where i just hired random people off the street not to say it's a bad thing but i think where we're at now it's like a level of of one trust because i've been fucked over a lot by a lot of a lot of barbers and you know it's a it's a learning process for sure um but basically what i look for is it's not even so much a craft because that's you can teach that it's more personality but that's something you cannot really change you know what i mean like bad habits stay as bad habits it's really up to that person if they can change that right. and i'm not trying to change the way you are if this is the way you've always been um so it's more of the personality and the work ethic work ethic is huge for me um so if somebody didn't have 
a huge following, but their work was decent and they had good recommendations, well, would yeah, that no. person be something yeah. you'd look for? No, for sure. The, the whole Instagram following, that doesn't mean anything to me because at the end of the day, it's, if, and this is what I tell a lot of people, if you can't turn those followers into like income, Money. it's really, it's not, it's pointless really, you know, because it's, again, at the end of the day, it's all about your personality and how you work. And again, like the craft itself is something that you could teach, mm -hmm. you know. And like, I like I like hiring. Okay, here's oops, what I have. Sorry. <laughs> I like hiring, you know, barbers that you know fresh out of school or like newly licensed, just because you know you could help now groom them to becoming, you know, more than just a, 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 a an amazing barber, but like a successful businessman. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, a lot of schools don't teach you the business aspect of barbering. Um, and that's what I want to teach is like once you get in like I'm gonna teach you everything from budgeting your money how to like invest your money how to start a brand your own brand you know and you know me firsthand everyone that's worked with us has now ventured off to doing everything that you guys have been you guys are born to do you know and I'm glad to be able to play a big part in your guys' career where yeah I worked with them and we've grown together and we till this day we're still a family you know what I mean and that's what it's about is like you don't want to tie no one to no ball and chain like, no, you're stuck with me for life. It's more of being able to help each other grow together, you know what I mean? So I agree. It's funny that you brought up school because this is another question I have because you went to school out in uh, Canada, right? Mm -hmm. So when you think about the schooling that you had to go through and everything that you do now on a professional level, would you say everything that school taught you has nothing to do with like the actual business of it? Like, did it teach you no, anything? No. Other than passing, like, state board? That's all it is. I feel like nowadays school is just typically teaching you exactly how to pass state board. And so that's why the goal is, I mean, before all this pandemic happened, the goal was to open up, like, an academy to be able to teach more than just cutting. It's basically more of the business aspect of it where, you know, I'm turning, you know, a, a student into a business, business-minded person. Again, like them understanding like what it takes because now i've noticed you know a lot of young barbers that are that i hire they come in and they're just like all right well, like they're lost because they just know of like what they needed to do to pass the exam but once they step foot in a barber shop it's like a whole new world and like they're starting from ground zero whereas you shouldn't if you finish barber school and you your license you should be ready to like damn you almost open up a shop or have the mentality of what's a business plan how to create a business plan and like having other options of like making money then rather than just behind the chair um okay so now it's been 10 years and what would you say is like the best thing about now like going into like this social media world this super exposed internet lifestyle um is there pros and cons to having that type of exposure because when we first started like 10 years ago mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of you couldn't compare yourself to anybody because nobody you didn't really see anybody until social media happened because before you can only compare to the people that you work with exactly. it's like okay is my work good because if it's not i can compare it to the best person in this shop what is what are they doing that's how i had to scale it over at american i was like okay i start from the bottom everybody had a lot more um experience and i'm like if i'm trying to get a better fade who's the best person in this shop and how do i compare to that to that type of look so now that we have so much access i mean to also YouTube Academy, loads of haircuts on there. I don't know if you used to learn off YouTube, but I remember when I did, there was probably maybe less than like five videos yeah, that I could thing, reflect like on. When I first started, we didn't even have any of that. We had no ad, Nothing. no ad. Like what I did to learn was, like my childhood barber actually taught me how to learn the basics of cutting. And then what I did was, I went to visit all these different shops and learn that way. Like that's how that was so my. You YouTube. did like your own look and learn by visiting exactly. shops. Exactly. I would just pop in a shop and they're like, "You're here to get cut." I'm like, "Nah, I'm just, I'm just here to watch." And they're like, "All right." So that was my way of. That was my YouTube. That's your YouTube. That's tight. And then when you were learning how to fade and all that stuff, was this something you learned off of like doing it on people, or like did you have like certain family members and friends that helped you kind of like gear your hair get get better at it? It was my team? homies, man. Like. Again, like my childhood barber, we all got cut by him. And so the moment he taught me how to cut, like I started just cutting all my homies. And it, that's how, that's literally how and it all started. they would just started. critique each other? Yeah, they would, it would take me literally two hours. Like I wouldn't, 
complete the cut until I knew and felt that I was confident enough to like, all right, I'm, I'm good, I'm done. Like, nice. You know, so it took a while, but I mean, just like anything else, just practice. That's dope. And I think that's what people need to hear sometimes because I think sometimes they're like, man, I don't cut fast enough, I'm not going to make yeah, it. Yeah, the, like, the, the speed will, will come. will come, exactly. Yeah. Once you understand the steps, I think that's a really important thing is the speed will follow, but also this also depends on where you work because I know some places. Oh, look at this. <laughs> These are the new Postmates delivery. What the heck? <laughs> Damn. That thing just goes on the whole sidewalk by itself? Yeah. What if somebody steals food? We got cameras on it. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, um, yeah, so back to what we were saying. Don't be afraid of not cutting fast. That's gonna come with time. Um, I, the importance is, so do you think nowadays it's important for people to have mentors? Do you think that is uh, something that people should look forward to or find? Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, you got those that are ego plays a big part in people where they're like oh, i don't need that i don't need that like i got a lot of mentors and you know, you know i've been in the game for so long but it's it's like business mentors even like barbers Still to this like, day. yeah like i'll reach out to you know you or Drew, like anyone that i've worked alongside with and i just get input and, and stuff like that like i'll even go to their classes and watch stuff and like watch stuff you post and you there's always room to learn you know what i mean like you could be in the game 20 years 25 years 30 years and there's always like new techniques and all, something always new to that could help with the speed as well. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They could speed things up and things exactly. that other barbers do. Like so, this day, like I got you know over ten barbers that work here with me, and I'm learning every day. Everyone cuts differently. You know what I mean? So true. It's always good to look up to people and ask, have people to, to ask questions. Yeah. You know I mean? So would you say people shouldn't be afraid to ask questions? Because no, I know everybody is like in their heads, like they want to ask. No, there's no such afraid. thing as a stupid question, you know what I mean? And like, you have to speak up, because then you'll never know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, bro. It was so good catching up with you. It's been a minute. Um, I hope you guys check out the bag and stay tuned for our IG Live. We're going to talk about something special coming up, so stay yeah. tuned for that. they are working on something, so stay tuned. All right, so now we're leaving. Vince, it was so good to catch up with him. He was literally one of my good mentors when I first came out to LA, like he really showed me the ropes, um, introduced me to cutting celebrities, being able to also work on set uh, for Wild and Out on MTV season eight at the time. I got to cut hair with him. Um, he's always been a really good friend of mine, has referred me to a lot of things that I don't know if I would ever be exposed to, which is why we talked about how networking is such an important thing, uh, especially in our industry to just kind of like build these organic relationships because honestly really you don't really know where it's going to lead you to so super thankful and really dope to be able to catch up with him here um his shop is out here in the in the la on la brea if you guys ever get a chance to check it out come through there in a previous video i had talked about the different types of shops that i have been able to work in and I would definitely say he has an upscale barbershop compared to uh, some of the ones that I worked at in the past. So if you guys get a chance, check it out. Vince is a good dude. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and a little insight on Vince the Barber and his new product. And again, stay tuned for our IG Live. It's going to be coming up. And we have a special surprise that we want to talk about there. Um, so stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys next time.